Hi everybody, my name is Sarah Beth, and I just finished reading The Partisan by Patrick Worrell. This book, uh, this is my uh, ebook version. It came out in 2022 and is about uh, 380 pages long. So, uh, I'm reading on my neck for a very specific purpose. I just found out that through the Barnes & Noble's premium membership, you get a free ebook every single month. So I'm gonna try reading some of their free ebooks that they offer every month. And this just happened to be one of the free books for December. So, um, the books, it's basically just a political intrigue kind of thriller that takes place mostly in the 1960s, but there is a large uh, section that's in World War II, so in the 1940s. The basic premise, there's this young boy named Michael. He becomes attracted to a Russian girl named Jul uh, Yulia, and um, she plays very good chess. He plays pretty good chess as well, and it almost had that Queen's Gambit element to it, but didn't really delve too far into that, which I think if you really like chess, you'll enjoy those aspects of the book, but I don't... It's very much on the top level, layman's terms for the most part. I... I think there's a few mentions of things I didn't understand, or not off the top of my head, just no, because I'm not entrenched in the chess scene, but... So he falls in love with her, and she's obviously a Soviet, so... You know, he wants to help her get out of the situation, and there is a woman named Greta who is involved in this political battle, and she was a Lithuanian guerrilla war soldier during the 1940s. Uh, her best friends were Jews, so she hid them away in the forest and took care of them, and they kind of just did what they could to survive. Uh, joined up with rebels when they had to, and so on and so forth. Uh, so it definitely is not a linear time structure book, and I would say those are the main players, uh, aside from this one name, uh, this one nam man named Vasily, who's kind of, uh, Yulia's protector. Um, he's a bit aspect as well, but my, the problem with the novel is it's not bad plot-wise. Uh, the story is fun enough. Um, I don't read a lot of, um, political novels anymore, uh, thrillers. I used to go on a binge of them, but, uh, they, they do tend to be a bit formulaic, so to speak. I did like the uh, lapses in time, I thought it was very well done, and it stayed very well with the themes of the novel and the progression of the main story with Michael and Yulia. Um, but I do believe the characters are pretty awful. They, they were just so wooden. Because the whole plot is pushed forward by our beliefs, as the reader, that Michael loves Yulia. And I have no one... Like, I, why would he? She's not very pretty, according to the, uh, the character descriptions. She's not looking, she's not seducing him in any way. He kind of just sees her from across the room and thinks, yeah, it's, it's, I'm, I'm into that woman. I need to know that woman. And she barely speaks to him and then shoves her tongue down his throat. And he's like, I must protect her at all costs. Something's happening. And I'm thinking... Why? What is the point? <laughs> um, so, you know, he he knows that she's in danger because um, there are very mean Russian men coming to her room and she has to kind of climb up the fire escape and prove that she's there. Um, I, don't, I don't really think there's much to say. Uh, I don't want to spoil anything because the whole book, there's, there's nothing is character driven. All of the characters are boring. Uh, you have Greta, she is the, the soldier, and her backstory is interesting. Um, you know, she is that caregiving, she has been hardened by war, but not really. She's always just cold and dead inside. Her parents are dead and she's like, nope, don't want to know about it, don't care. Uh, the, the writing's okay, there are definitely passages that you really want to skim over, because you're thinking, oh, this is way too much detail, I just don't care that much to know how expensive somebody's suit is. Uh, so th that does come into play a bit. It's overly descriptive to where it's... 
I believe this is why uh, American Psycho, the novel, can get kind of dry is because it does become overly descriptive. I think that's the same aspect here. Um, but, but like I said, it's enjoyable. If you really love these kind of novels where, you know, you have spy espionage and it's fun, okay? But it's not... I was struggling a bit. I really thought I could go through this book rather quickly. Uh, despite the fact that it's 380 pages, it is relatively fast paced, but I just didn't want to read it. There was never a point where I said to myself, oh, I want to read this, but I'd already bought the book and gotten it for free and I couldn't not finish it because I had it for free on my nook, which as, as you typically know, I don't read a lot on my nook because I try to get a lot of secondhand books and I, I love the feeling of paper, but I will say that um, reading electronically sometimes is, um, it's just easier. It's, uh, you know, if you're traveling, for instance, it's a lot easier to just upload a book and read multiple as opposed to bringing a whole stack, which I did last time I traveled. Don't recommend. Um, but like I said, this is not a recommendation for me. I don't think it was terrible. As free books goes, I think that it's, a, you know, if you're getting a free book and this is the kind of genre you like, take it. But it's not a recommendation for me. Um, I think maybe pick Robert Laudlam. I really love his Maltese series, the the Countdown and Maltese Circle. That's the first one, and then Countdown is the sequel. You can read them any order. Doesn't matter. I read the second one first. Doesn't matter to me, and I think they're both great and much better than this book. But free book. So, hope you enjoyed my review, and have a good one.